you, you, you want to know what we're doing here? Do you? Okay, I'll tell you what we're doing. Have you ever been to someone who reads your palm and tells you all about you? That was in ancient times. These are modern times. We can actually read your face. We have parameters. We can take a measurement, a digital electronic measurement of your face, of your skin. Uh, and we take these parameters. We can also take a few other measurements. And we give you an assessment. We give you, we give you an assessment of these parameters, of these digital parameters of your face. We can tell you exactly what kind of elasticity, humidity, um, oiliness, and so on your face has. Once you have this assessment, um, you know exactly what kind of skin you have. Now look all around you. Do you see all these oils we have here? These are all natural oils. They're very good natural oils. And now we have a special computer program here that was built by professors of dermatology and professors of computer science and mathematics. And what they did was they know how to, this computer program knows how to take all these natural oils and put them into one good, very high quality facial cream that is especially adapted to your parameters, to these parameters that we just measured. So once you get your measurement, our computer program can take all these oils and put them into a special face cream or any other cream that is adapted especially for you, for no one else. This is what we know how to do here. The special uh, computer program, program here can, can actually give you 157 million different options adapted to all different personal parameters. So if you want a measurement, the first thing we do is take the measurements of your skin. Once you have the assessment, we can decide on what kind of creams you choose. But the computer program is going to um, um, adapt and build the cream you choose, especially to your own parameters. So it will adjust your pH, it will adjust your elasticity, adjust your hydration and so on. I had a simple problem. I have this atopic skin and I had to evolve, develop some sort of a cream that will work for me. But I didn't want to use the creams that were available that are all this, you know, chemical bullshit. And somehow or other, talking with Danny and so forth, over nights and days of making weird creams, we eventually found a way to make this really good atopic cream, which works really nice mm -hmm. for me. Yep. Simultaneously, I have this wife who had rosacea, and her rosacea, she's tried everything, of course, she's done its friend, so she's had all the... I also treated her very successfully. And other things, and so forth. <laughs> and then we started... She didn't want to take the pills anymore. Yeah, she didn't want I, to take I could the treat her with pills. She didn't want to take the pills. So we tried all kinds of things. At first, we put such dosages of... of chemical of, of ingredients, or natural ingredients. I was absolutely disgusting, she had to vomit every time. After. So eventually we got it to work. And once we made these two creams, say, wow, you know, this thing is good. We can probably make uh, stuff. But the problem is, we o I only could make a rosacea cream that was good for Desiree, or an atopic cream that was good for me. And say, well, that's right, we'll make creams for everyone that's good just for them. Yeah? It's part of yeah, the process yeah, that yeah, happened here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We live on a network. Every single capsule, they go through the scanner to make sure that uh, you're the right capsule. Once the capsule goes through the scanner, I know it here, and then I will replenish them online in real time, and they don't have to worry about inventory ever again. They will always have full inventory. Things will work for them. Maintenance of the skin is an important thing to do. So that's the image we're projecting, as opposed to uh, others who might say, if you put this on, you become beautiful. So well, if you don't become beautiful, but your skin won't deteriorate as fast, you know? Most of the time, the skin will be healthy and will, will be beautiful. Yes, I think, I think healthy is beautiful. And it's something, it's something rather new now that healthy and beautiful. Forty years ago, it wasn't the case. We don't use, of course, parabens, detergents. Uh, it's safe and non-toxic. There are no artificial fragrance. The main reason for allergies for, from creams is from the artificial fragrances. Here, fragrances are provided from natural essential oils, which you have looked at when you came in, those little things. We, of course, don't do animal testing unless you think that testing on myself constitutes animal <laughs> testing. Is it animal testing? <laughs> no comments. <laughs> <laughs> and we are a capsule system which is 100% recycled. There is nothing except for paper towel and stuff like that that goes in the garbage. Everything you use, you return to me. 
ones so I keep for testing and others so that I send them to the plant so they can uh, uh, make new plastic out of it. We will not reuse the capsule as such. It will be turned back into plastic and so forth. Danny and I looked at that a lot. This is really our brains, right? This, uh, where we combine Danny and I is in the algorithm. Danny's knowledge, my ability to create systems. Most of the cosmetic companies in the world today are trying, are trying to understand these metabolic functions of the skin. It's become a major theme in cosmetic in industry. Um, so they put millions of dollars into research. So cosmetic research and um, development focuses on two main areas, formulation and novel metabolic pathways. Novel metabolic pathways is understanding what all kinds of different molecules are doing inside these cells and, and then they say, oh, we found a new something that happens inside the cells and we're going to intervene, we're going to make it better. Um, and um, formulations is just putting different chemicals inside the cream and making the cream a little nicer to apply or hold for longer or, or behave in a different way. So what they do in the R&D is mainly formulations and the novel metabolic pathways. Why do they need novel metabolic pathways? What they say is, look, um, this is more than a barrier function, here's the epidermis. We're going to actually interfere with things that are happening here, with the proliferation of cells and so on. Um, usually, the, the metabolic pathway behind this R&D is solid, but whatever they put in the cream doesn't really work. For example, cosmetic companies come out and say, look, we have pro-collagen in our cream, or collagen, or, or elastin, or, or um, the, the second cousin once removed of elastic fibers and things like that. Um, it's nice, it's a good sales pitch, but it never penetrates the skin. It doesn't do anything here. Um, and if they have a molecule that will actually interfere with the behavior of the fibroblasts, um, it will probably have to be a medication. And there is, some molecules do that, but they're not in cosmetics, they're in medication. Um, so in most, I'm going to read this out, because in most of the major pharmaceutical companies, research and development is geared towards complex and often novel metabolic pathways. Um, and the production of ingredients that may interfere, change or correct these pathways. There's sometimes some evidence for beneficial effect of these ingredients, but quite often the novel ingredient has a logical scientific connection to a metabolic skin function, but very little evidence of ha having any actual effect. Does that make sense, what yes. I just said? Um, Ishii's emphasis is not there. It's on natural formulations, personally adapted to restore barrier function. So we're looking much more at the mechanical function of the skin. Um, some of the natural oils actually do have more than mechanical fu uh, function. They do um, penetrate the skin a little bit and do something, but mainly we're looking at the barrier function of the skin and we're adding the right oils and antioxidants to it. Smart, clean, healthy, personal and convenient um, with all the different choices and the brochure, and as Joseph mentioned earlier, some of what I just spoke about, about the, the, the parameters, the hydration, the oiliness, um, elasticity, actually appear on the brochure as a kind of standard text. The final product is an oil in water emulsion. Now, any mixture of oil and water is called an emulsion. I told you yesterday, that's why, that's why it usually looks white, because the oil, when it's emulsified, turns into little, little spheres and bubbles, and that's why milk looks white and creams look white. Um, it's an emulsion of natural oils, which is a cosmetic cream, with minimal chemicals. This is an emulsifier and a preservative, prepared on the spot, especially adapted to individual parameters, after presenting the client with a detailed personal assessment. And all products increase the barrier function of the skin and convey a good feeling. Uh, the the on-the-spot mixing and making of a, of, a, of a personally adapted cosmetic, a big cosmetic company cannot imitate this. This is a completely new uh, niche in, in the cosmetic world. It really is new. But not all of which are appropriate to be scents. For instance, chamomile sticks, although he likes it. But yeah, I shape. hate chamomile. What are you talking about? smells really bad. You use it all the time. No, I don't. You keep sticking it in my cream. I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I like geranium, I hate chamomile. <laughs> <laughs> but you need it. <laughs> I need it, I don't like it. it. Next time I'll try <laughs> neem on you. <laughs> so I'll be like that. <laughs> I think we're about to start a revolution, not just in the world of cosmetics, but this idea of adapting products specifically for people is going to be a trend in a lot of different products.